Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast presents episode 841, Winter Has Come, recorded live on November 10th, 2022. Hello everyone, welcome to Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I am your host, The Storm. I am your co-host, Godzilla T. And winter is here. Not in the seasonal sense for us in the Northern Hemisphere, but winter in Halo. Actually, Halo winter showed up here. We just don't have any frozen precipitation yet. This morning when I got up, it was 70 degrees. Okay. It's 50 uh, winter is coming at 12 it, o'clock in the middle of November <laughs> at 12 o'clock. It was 68. Okay. Hold front at 1245. It was 53. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. There was a noticeable change in the weather anyway. And now I have yeah. thunderstorms rolling through. So, if you hear a little, you know why. Okay. <laughs> Yay! That's a degree every three minutes. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Wow. That's that was a cold front. I guess. Yeah. Dang it. Are we getting that soon then? Um. We must be. Probably not, because it was traveling from northwest to southeast. Although it could make a turn up towards you. Mm-hmm. Although I did see in the map that you're on the outer edge of below average temperatures <laughs> on the nationwide map. So we're supposed to be 69. Nice. Tomorrow, 66, Saturday, and 51 on Sunday and 48 the next. Yeah, our like low 10 days. Sa- our low Saturday night into Sunday is supposed to be 17. Be a little chilly Sunday. I don't think I'll have the shorts on. I would hope not. At least not in public. Right. (laughs) Anyways. So we've got the winter update finally dropped for Halo Infinite. Everyone's been going nuts about it on social media. If you haven't seen it already. People streaming customs. This is saving Halo. Woo. A lot more attention to Halo. Anyway. I've seen the tweets from this is how Halo should have launched last year to people finally being able to like doing campaign like people that haven't even touched campaign because they're waiting for co-op and now they're doing campaign for the very first time so it's it's almost kind of like a relaunch of halo infinite in a strange way just because there's now content and Mm -hmm. it's quote unquote more complete than we got at the actual launch of halo infinite i would like to say that Yes, it is a big update to Halo, and it is something it desperately needed. Yeah. And yes, it should have launched with it. Yep. I don't think it's as much as a lot of people are making it out to be. Don't get me wrong. It's going to help Halo. The additions of Forge Maps, of custom games, which I've already been digging around for, and just so people, people in our community know, I did find a version of Speed Halo that actually works pretty good. Even with Halo Infinite Physics. Nice. It takes a little longer to speed up, though. Okay. Just a little bit. But you still get the... uh, Like older versions. So, once you get rocking, it's it's fun. So, I'm wondering where you found those. Because I... I I got into Infinite, and then I went and tried to go looking for them. And I could not find... Well, I actually went to the website and search that way. If you go, well, I just browsed. I just browsed all and started scrolling through for speed. I just typed in speed and it brought up all the different variations with speed in the name. Yeah. Inside Infinite, only three results showed up. Yeah. When I, when I did it on the website, 
three pages showed up with speed in the name. Like huh. I said, I just very general search. I wonder if the uh, results in game are just different than eh, whatever. It it could be. It's entirely possible. One thing I do want to say is because I found it, it's not very intuitive as to where they put the content browser. You know, you would it, in past it was always available in your service record or something like that. Well, no, it's right on the main. It's right on the Halo Infinite main page. So if you uh, open up the website, go to games, Halo Infinite, and then at the top of the top of the page it says Content Browser, and then you can go in and browse. I wonder if that's so, just temporary because it's so new. Versus it could be where there's an actual landing page for it. Like I said, norm, you know, in the past, it's always been in with your service record, but you know, and that's ex- immediately where I started looking to begin with, but it wasn't there. So just wanted to put that out there in case anybody's having trouble finding it. No, that's, that's good. Good to know that, you know, the website's still stupid and broken. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, 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 uh, Halo Waypoint website is crap. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't even, you know, it's, you load it up and you think you're looking, you're looking at on your phone, you know, when I'm on a desktop. Yep. When I'm on a desktop, I want a desktop style experience. Yes. I mean, literally, to look at the freaking articles, I have to zoom them in so I can actually read the damn things. <laughs> because it winds up being a strip about four inches wide in the middle of my screen. Anyways. Anywho. But, I mean, the good news is that there is actually a content browser on the website, so that at least yes, helps a little and bit. And you can actually sort your bookmark games. Thank God. <laughs> well, good to know that the website experience is, I guess, a little bit better than the console experience because I searched for speed uh, earlier today. There are only three results and all three of them sucked. Yeah. The one I bookmarked was called better speed. I looked at that one. That one sucked. Well, that, that was the one that worked the best of all the ones I tried. Yeah. And like I said, it's... I actually found that on that one, your best bet is, of course, your first pass, full throttle all the way down, then just let go of the controls. See, that didn't work for me. Like the the wheels just just pulled the warthog to a halt. If you if you didn't, I had I had every one of the warthogs because I was just playing by myself, just screwing around. I had every one of the warthogs flying through the air. No matter like it Mach ten. No matter what I could do, I couldn't get the warthog to flip. I couldn't get it to not like stop with the tread. So maybe I just <laughs> like I said, I it takes a little bit. Of, like I said, that's the only real real downside is it takes longer to get them going than it has in past iterations. Of, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Unfortunately, I won't be there tomorrow to try it out but hopefully the next week i will be around and i've been i haven't had a lot of time but i've been trying to find some custom games i've seen a few husky raid rochambeau type things Mm -hmm. i found a rochambeau i'm gonna try to dig around for a husky raid tomorrow night before game night see if i can find a decent one if i ever have time in my schedule i might make one Mm mm-hmm we do. We have a Potacular Husky raid or Rochambeau type map. If people want yeah. to come out with layouts, they would like to see. There, uh, we are. If you have a map or game type that you want to share, please post that in our game night Discord. Give credit where credits due. If it's yours, claim it. If it's not, let us know who who made it. Uh, we'll kind of be able to tell. <laughs> like I said, just give them props in our Discord so you know people can see it right there. 
and leave us a link. And so people can go directly to the download page and bookmark it. I will be perusing. Lots of, uh, lots of files getting posted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see there. I've seen the pit coagulation. I thought I found a Chiron, but it was broken. No, it was a work in progress. (laughs) If if you found the same one that I found, because it was one of the first things that popped up when I was just perusing it, but it was just like, yeah, one room and then other pieces that they were working on. Yeah. Like I said, it, it was, it was not complete. Let's see, I found a battle Creek. Let's see what else. I think it's going to take some time before the, for lack of better words, the, uh, the forgers who are good at doing the remakes of the map really mm-hmm. get in there and really fine tune. Cause I saw the video that Uber Nick posted when he was playing the coagulation one. And while it kind of functionally worked, it, it still looked very like, this was kind of a block out of coagulation. Yeah. This isn't like a a dev style map, which I know there's a lot of forgers out there that can really take the time to make something that looks mm-hmm. original and well like I said, dev-made. unless you've had access to the mode for the last six months, right. you know, anything that you've put out, anything that anybody's put out is gonna be very unfinished. Yeah. Because to really make them look good, it takes time. Yep. You know, and, you know, unless they started on it as soon as, you know, as soon as it became available on Tuesday, <laughs> it, you know, yep. and have been working on it ever since, it, you know, not, not eating, not sleeping, not playing Halo, just forging, it's going to be, you know, they're going to be in rough shape. Yeah. I, I Yeah. Like with the Chiron, Chiron that I found. People still need to learn how to operate Forge and not post unfinished maps. <laughs> yeah, there's a little public and not public tick tick box for a reason. Yeah, you might want to just kind of not public until it's done. Yeah. Suffice to say, we'll start introducing customs into our game nights. Mm-hmm. And for Definitely. those that are in our Discord server, we have our game night text chat. So please post any game types and modes that you would like us to consider playing in the, the game night chat, please post the link. Don't just post the name of it. That way GT can go and bookmark it and get it prepped and checked out, make sure it all works and everything for the game nights. Yeah. Make sure it's not completely broken. Yeah. Only kind of (laughs) broken. Right. So, Speaking of more Halo news, since we're kind of already in that style of things, um, we've got, again, the whole winter update, which includes campaign co-ops. I've seen people start to get in on that action. I'm guessing we will probably host our own co-op at some point so we can go for achievements. Just have to find a time GT and I are available so we can host that and get people in and rotated. So we'll stream that as well, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. And we also got the Forge beta, which we just kind of talked a lot about. Uh, I will hopefully be getting some time in over the holidays to make my game show stage and maybe dabble in a couple of other style of maps. Yeah. Got the new battle pass, got the new game types and modes, which have you had a chance to play the new mode? Or are, are you even interested in playing the no, new mode? No, I, have, I, have, okay. I haven't even, I haven't actually played Halo this week. Gotcha. Other than testing out a few customs, it kind of happens when you start work at seven o'clock and you stop work at five o'clock. It, sure. You kind of don't have any energy when you get home. Gotcha. I did get hop online today with the intent of getting a few games of the new mode in and on the new map. And I will say that the covert one flag has an interesting feel to it. I don't mm-hmm. see it's something that. I would necessarily play long term, but if eventually it became something of a rotational playlist, I could see that being fun every now and then. Well, I think they actually said it is rotational. Okay. I mean, that kind of makes sense. I think for, I haven't, I've only played it on my own. So I think if you were actually playing with people with the party, it would probably be a lot more fun. And it's very reminiscent of the one flag CTF. Mm-hmm. And it's just a little bit more styled. So the active camo 
regen super quick, so you could basically be active camouflage throughout the entire round. The threat sensors, they regen on the standard regen, and it's basically you have an infinite amount of them to use, so it's it's mostly just what is you're anticipating where each other are, are moving, more or less. Mm-hmm. I actually did watch uh, Keys posted a video of it, uh, of him playing the one flag, covert one flag, and it's it looks really, f- it actually kind of looks fun. I have, like I said, I haven't given it a try yet, so I don't know. Uh, I'll probably try it. We'll probably try it a little bit tomorrow night and just see how it goes uh, before we jump into customs. But yeah, so lots of cool things I think to to look forward to. Give it a try. It's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I think it's definitely an interesting twist on the one flag CTF concept Mm -hmm. that we've had. Detachment is uh, mostly a fun map. I've only played Covert One Flag on it, so don't have a lot of experience with other Slayer type, but it feels fun. Lots of good pathways to navigate through the map, so overall it felt like a pretty good map. Unfortunately, with issues that they've encountered with Argyle, they've had to take Argyle completely out of matchmaking. Apparently they found something they didn't test for. It was causing games to crash. Gee. And it's a, oh. and it's a Forge made map. Oops. Uh, speaking of crashing games, they announced, uh, Unishek announced today that NVIDIA has fixed their driver. Again. So you now can update to the latest driver. And it shouldn't make Halo Infinite crash. Again. So everybody. No, the last one was they were telling everybody to roll back. Oh, I thought they released a hot fix like three, two, three weeks ago. Mm. No, they just told everybody to go roll back to the previous previous driver. Well, there was a rollback, but then there was a hot fix. I missed the hot fix. Oh, but yes. More driver updates. You know, I'm going to stay on the driver I'm on for a while before (laughs) I update. Because I really don't like having to uninstall video drivers. They're not fun. No. So we have the the new graphics driver to go for. There's also been an update on the back end of the Halo servers as well. What else was there? meant to open up the Halo support Twitter before we started, but I forgot to. Oops. Yeah, there was something else that they that they just talked about releasing earlier. Uh, back in update. Oh, that's right. So the reduction in penalties that we talked about last week during the whole update post on Waypoint that is finally in. So again, nice. if you quit, if you're the first one to quit, fifteen points of your CSR straight to go. Everything else is reduced from there. Uh, so that is fixed. Uh, a lot of forgers have been running into issues with uh, idling out the server, basically kicking them. They have increased the idle boot timer to 12 hours. And I know peop- there's some people like force, they'll, they'll force something, then they'll just leave it running and then go do something and then come back. Mm-hmm. But as you do with any kind of computer work whatsoever, save often. Save often. Very often. There are some autosave features in there, but it helps to manually save as well whenever you whenever you can. Yeah, like if you're gonna walk away from it, save and quit. Just save and quit. <laughs> so that's been rolled out <sighs> in Forge. And what else do we have? I think that's pretty much all the specifics for the winter update before we get onto some of the other exciting Halo news that we've got. Let's see, what what do we want to pick on first? Because there's a lot to dig through. You have a leaning towards one particular announcement? Nah, just pick one. Okay, well, let's go ahead and start with birthdays. Yay, birthdays! Yeah. So, yesterday, November 9th, Halo 2 turned 18 years old. 18 years of Halo 2. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, earlier this week... Halo that means 4. Halo CE is old enough to drink. Yeah, Halo CE is 21. We're coming up on 21. Yeah. Uh, on November 7th, Halo 4 turned 10 years old. 
Woohoo! Double digits! Yeah. And with that, we actually got a little bit of content to come with it. So if you go over to Halo Waypoint, there is a, I guess, an expansion of lore on one of these Spartan Ops missions. It's called Halo 4 Vertical Umbridge. Mm -hmm. And it's called Everything Has Gone Wrong. Well, not everything. So it is a kind of little short excerpt kind of, kind of story, something that you would find in a, I'm looking at my books, Tales from Slip Space or Halo Evolutions type of just short seven, ten minute read type of thing. Mm -hmm. It's got some narrative storyline in there if you're interested in going and checking it out. So there's uh, that for Halo 4's 10th anniversary. And they also, I, I don't, remember if, saw, don't remember if they actually made this announcement or if I just saw this in the passing tweet, but it looks like they're introducing theater to Halo 4's campaign and Spartan Ops in MCC. Official theater support. Not the uh, not the hacked up job that people found their way around to make work for the Halo 4 and 360. So for everyone that's still grinding out MCC stuff and making content in there, we finally have a way to get theater clips <laughs> in Halo 4, which was the one game that didn't have it. Breach had it, 3 had it, and now Halo 4 will officially have it in some capacity. So, yay! Fun stuff. There was a Halo 5 ser uh, Xbox One S console? No. There was a Halo 5 Xbox One console, but not, not, not a Halo 5 S. Why? I, 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 well, with the anniversary of Halo 4, I decided, yeah, what the heck, I'll check eBay on what a Halo 4 360 costs right now. Sealed in box. Brand new. Okay? Just to preface this. Buy it now, $980. Buy it now, $750 or best offer. You going from high to low here? <laughs> no, this is just okay. default sort. Buy it now, $1,099.99. Buy it now, $1,199 or best offer. What about used? Oh, used, they're uh, 100 bucks. Okay. 70, 100 bucks. I mean, Th those are all supposedly sealed boxes. Brand, yeah, brand new inbox. Yeah. I think you guys, it, you know, the $1,100 for the console, and they, they still want to charge you 50 bucks to ship it. I mean, if they don't sell it, they'll eventually drop their numbers, right? Maybe. Who would pay that kind of money for a 10 year old console? Collectors, man. They'll spend money on a lot of things. Yeah. Wait, an unopened Mega Bloks Mammoth was $1,200? $1, I have one of those unopened. You tell me I can make $1,200 right now by selling that thing unopened? But I have one of those things. Yeah, but why would you do that? I don't have room to store it or to display it. I'm not. What? Yeah, just put, put the box on a shelf behind you. <laughs> I got other things to put on the shelves I eventually plan on putting up here. That's not those. You'll just have to get a wider camera angle. It's not the camera angle that's the problem. It's the, the sheer amount of shelf space. I don't have room in my house anymore to add too much more things. I'm getting cramped. Oh, you guys, re does everybody remember the Halo Collector's Edition? Halo Infinite Collector's Edition that they did at Walmart? Oh, yeah. The Collector's Edition. <laughs> yeah. $170 on eBay right now. Okay, that's it for this pricing corner. <laughs> right. Damn, it kind of makes me wish I'd had a bot one of those Halo 4 consoles. I've got mine sitting on my shelf. You can buy one used. Well, I mean, I, well, uh, I kind of like to buy one that hasn't been futzed with. Yeah, to each their own. But I ain't given $750 for it. I might give. $400 for it. Maybe 450 Because I think they were $399 new, weren't they? Something like that. Somewhere around there. Yeah. I don't specifically remember. All right, back on topic. Uh, we've got, with the introduction of being one year for Halo Infinite, there is a free death effect that you can get. You just have to go to the store and purchase it. It's kind of a 
homage to the kind of reach style birthday party death animation. Mm -hmm. So it's got confetti, it's got balloons, it's got noise. It's all all fun. So you can go grab that from the the store currently. I don't know how long it's up there, at least for this week. In addition, there is also a nameplate that you can grab on MCC as well. Where did I put that tweet? It sucks when half the announcements are, are done via Twitter and <laughs> not on the website. There it is. Veter- yeah, it would kind of be nice if they had an avis- official place on their website for announcements. Yeah, even for small things. Uh, it's for Veterans Day. So there's a veteran. like Discord? Yes, kind of like Discord. Anyways, there is a Veterans Day nameplate on MCC that you can grab just by logging in before November 16th. We've also got, finally, since... Did we actually talk about this on the podcast? That the Blu-ray for the Halo series was available? I can't remember if we talked about no, it No, we not. didn't, actually. Yeah. Anyways, I found it about two weeks ago, posted it in our Discord, Pins jumped on it, GT jumped on it, but they finally put a tw- tweet out to announce that, hey, the Blu-ray, the 4K Blu-ray for Halo the series is officially on pre-order. And no, I didn't buy it just because it was Halo. I did enjoy the series. I did, too. Uh, this is only available on Amazon right now, but there is a DVD version, a Blu-ray version, a 4K version. Of course, I got the, the 4K version. There's a nice little limited edition steelbook with it. And apparently, there's mm-hmm. over five hours of additional bonus content. Uh, you know, that reminds me. What? What does it remind you of? Which version did I get? Go check. Update your order if you need to. <laughs> Let's see. I, yeah, I did get the 4K version. Cool. At least I think I did. I'm guessing you probably did. Yeah. Yeah, the $50 one, so. We, anyway. We've also got the updates to Halo MCC matchmaking. So, Team Fiesta is in. And then Ranked Halo 3 Hardcore Doubles is in. For those still grinding out MCC, which I'm still doing it. I'm still grinding out those... Uh, Spartan points and challenges for customization and things. One of these days I'll get back and try to do Lazo. <laughs> one of these days. Yeah, one of these days I might actually uh, work on that again. And that is it for the Twitter updates. Hello. Thank you for the follow there, Byron. Thank you for Appreciate coming in and joining the stream, joining the podcast. Uh, in addition for Halo 4's 10th anniversary... There is a whole write-up from several people that were involved with the early days of the st- early days early days of the studio <laughs> and the development of Halo Four. Kiki Wolfkill leading off the pack of going through mm-hmm. recounting some of the memories and stories. Uh, Neil Davidge with the the music and the con- and the iconic ways that they were trying to kind of express Halo in a new light. Dan, I. Sorry, Dan, I mess up your name every time. Uh, Kosich, I think that's how you say his, his name. Uh, Corrine Robinson, who's been part of the Lord team for a while now. Glenn Israel, David Ellis, Greg Murphy, Kevin Schmidt. All of them have put into this article just kind of recounting what it was like during the days of the Halo 4 development. What was it like to bring Halo into New Light, being the new tenants of the Halo franchise and what it was like to really kind of set Halo 4 apart and really try to do something new with the franchise. And looking back on it, it's definitely made Halo more interesting narratively. I think I I didn't appreciate it at the time. And if you go back and listen to those podcasts, cringe, (laughs) cringe years for my podcasting career and just my opinions on Halo, I think a little bit. Well, to be fair, Dust, you, the same thing happened with Reach. And not, you know, a lot of people hated Reach. But now everybody's like, oh, Reach was one of the greatest Halo games ever. Okay, whatever. (laughs) Talking about the multiplayer, by the way, not the campaign. But anyway, from the get-go, I enjoyed 4. And I've said this before, the only thing, the only real problem I had with four was the fact that you needed to know so much of the external fission to understand the story fully. Right. 
And that was it my was big gripe sto- at, the, at the start, too. Yeah. Like, the story itself but, was kind of good if you knew the context. Well, I mean, even if you didn't know the context, it was a good story, but there were a lot of plot points that you just wouldn't get. You would, gl- you would gloss over them and not realize that they were actually plot points. Right. But, you know, all in all, I, I thoroughly enjoyed 4. Same. Kind of looking after the fact. I think multiplayer to start was kind of... It was interesting. I, I don't know if I was super excited about it at the time. It definitely is a lot faster paced than previous mm-hmm. Halos. I was not a fan of the call-in drop pod thingies. <laughs> ordinance drops. The ordinance drops. The I mean, they, they did try to make it a cod killer. That's that was their well, their intent at the time. Y- well, you, know, you can't beat cod by playing cod's game, right? And we've slowly they, they, rolled they back saw, from that. Thankfully, they they don't get me wrong. The infinite slayer. Yeah, Infinite Slayer is what they called it, wasn't it? Yes. Infin- Infinity Slayer. But yeah. Infinity Slayer, that's right. Yep. Uh, you know, Infinite. Infinity. Yeah, it's really, close. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I didn't have fun with it, but I did notice that I had to kind of give it some time for the matchmaking system to kind of figure everybody out before I really started to enjoy it. Makes sense. Yeah. We've also got a new cannon fodder, kind of in tandem with Halo 4's 10 year anniversary and the announcement of the Didact book. So, Halo Epitaph. There's a little bit of information written up by Haruspis. I think this is probably his new favorite thing because he's always been into the lore and he gets to, to write about it uh, so much now. <laughs> so, he's fitting right in. But there's a few interesting little tidbits even more tie-ins to halo infinite that i wasn't even aware of and i didn't know if i don't know if you were aware of this but apparently this isn't the first time that we've seen the fire team that beneath the stone was part of fire team shadow it was mentioned in some pre-halo 4 promotional materials it was also mentioned in one of the spartan ops missions hence the little short story piece mm-hmm. that they released on waypoint. I do remember the Spartan ops reference. Uh, the other one. No, I didn't know about. Yeah. And a whole bunch of other things around just the whole didact story. So cryptum mm-hmm. primordium silentium, a whole bunch of new things and details for the new content, like the new maps that we've got in there. They always throw a little tidbit in there and it looks like they're, bringing back a little bit of some of the lore highlights. So we've got a video from installation zero zero and two other ones that I'm not familiar with two other YouTubers, but showcasing some community lore content as well. So that's all the, the news type stuff, a little bit shorter show today because I'm sure as we get into actually seeing customs get published and maps get published, We'll talk about some of the favorites that come out. I know Speed Halo is going to be one of ours that we usually go to. We've got a handful of our own little favorites that we like to pull together from previous Halos. So Speed, Rochambeau, Husky Raid. Paintball. Paintball. The Warthog Pit one. I haven't found that one yet. I don't think it's made. Although I don't think it would be very hard to make. Like We could make that in a few hours. Go right ahead. Was I, I forget what is it called? I mean, it's just infection, so you just need the script brain to do the infection, and then you just need to put mm-hmm. the just need to test the arc of where the warthogs would go, and then you just need to put the graphics. I did find monster trucks. I did find uh mongoose sumo. Vehicle fiesta. No vehicle fiesta I haven't found yet. That'd be a good one. Let's see. You know, I might actually have to pull up my Halo 5 library <laughs> in one tape. Well, no, I can't look at it online anymore. Damn it. You have to do it in game. I'll just, I'll just have to do it in game. Yep. Because, you know, that's so much fun. At least you only have to do it once. See, why Halo 5? Because they've just completely put Halo 5 in the dust, unfortunately. Which sucks because it's a good, like, 
It's a great multiplayer experience, honestly. Actually, it's customs in Halo Five were awesome. Yeah. Just a pain in the ass to find. Right. You know, even after you bookmarked them. Right. There Halo- towards the end, I kind I kind of got to the point where I just had a favorites tab in my browser, and I go in and bookmark the bookmark it. Yep. And then unbookmark it so I could find it easier. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Anyways, hey Ace, haven't seen you in here in a while. Three four three. You thought you could sneak in? Yeah. Just a suggestion. Can you please bring back the content browsers for the older games? Please. I'm just asking. At least for MCC. I mean, it'd be nice to have it for Halo Five too. But like at least I said, for the MCC, older, the older games. Halo 5, Halo 4, Halo 3, Halo, well, Halo 2 and Halo 1 never really did have one, but. No. Well, Halo 3, 4, and Reach were all 360, and those services are gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're not getting those back. So the only ones that really make sense are 5. Well, they can. MCC. They can do it for MCC. Yeah. 5 and MCC give us and more, Infinite. Yeah. You know, and give us the opportunity to hold more than 50 maps in, or 50 anything in mcc you know i think that would be probably one of the easiest things for them to implement like i'm i'm curious if there's a technical reason if they can't it probably would break the game we are talking about mcc here i yeah but i mean look at all the great things they've done with mcc like they've Mm -hmm. like more or less fixed everything that was wrong with mcc yeah (laughs) and then they start tinkering with it again and break it i mean yeah there is always that risk but I mean, they've been tinkering yes, with it I since 2014, would, and it's got, only gotten better over the last yeah. four years. That's really. I would love oh, wow. if they would, if they would just find a way to make it not, I guess not ga- or game wide as far as your bookmarks or your downloads, but like a per game, like. Halo 1, you can have 50. Halo 2, you can have 50. Halo 3, you can have 50. Halo 4, you can have 50. That would be fine. But yeah, there's... I yeah. really wish there was a better way to do that. Yeah. One can hope. I wish there was a... F- well... I wish for a lot the, of things. The idea but- of having a feature request would be interesting. I don't know if it's such a good idea. <laughs> and do they even continue to use that Trello board? Because they, they had that at one point for MCC. I might have to go dig around for that. That would be interesting to go to go look at. But as we get more customs and and game modes and everything, we'll be expanding our whole library of, of fun. So yeah. Let's see. What? What what? Oh I'm You're gonna go find something. Browsing. Oh, okay. Well, I mean that's all we had to talk about really for tonight. Everything is kind of coming together. We will probably talk about more customs uh, as the days come for those that are uh listening on twitch we had a podcast with the four tub guys uh that we did offline uh unfortunately audition was being a pain in the butt and was doing some really wonky things where as i was editing on one piece of or, or one audio track it would randomly copy audio from another track and i overwrote my audio so had to kind of scrounge together what little bits and pieces I could from our recording. So that was episode 840. We're going to have them back on again to talk about the new website and things, but we have a lot of cool uh, things to look forward to from Forgehub. Fun fact for for UGT, since I I know you don't go back and listen to all the episodes, but they're introducing $10,000 prize pools for their next few Forge contests. Wow. Yeah. $10,000. So if you've ever dabbled in Forge or are interested in dabbling in Forge, this might be an interesting time to start looking into maybe Forging. They're still talking through some details on how they're going to, like, how do they divvy out the money if there's more more than one contributor on the map and all that kind of stuff. But with how crazy Forge is in Infinite, there's going to be lots of cool contests and it's just going to get better and better as people learn the tool and the capability. Mm-hmm. But their website's launching next week. 
or the the revamp of their website, they'll they'll do the same thing that they've done in the past where people can post screenshots of their map and get votes and get feedback and everything. And now since the actual file custom game browser on Waypoint works and you can just use a link to get to it, that integration is going to be really nice and easy to use. Because <laughs> Halo 5 didn't have that to start. No. Although it would be nice if you could actually just click on one and then see the details about it. I haven't done it on the web page to, to see. Oh, I mean, you yeah, just unfortunately, click in there. on the yeah, on the web page, you can bookmark it. You know, they give you things to bookmark it, but you can't like open it to see who the author is or anything. You can. You just click on the name, and then it gives you all the details. Oh, there it is. Okay, never yeah. mind. Just click on the name. Jeez, we wouldn't want to make just, you know, the box a link. That would be silly. You mean the picture? The picture or the box or anything. Again, whoever's doing their website, I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the, this website sucks. <laughs> it needs help bad. Although I have found like 27 versions of Octagon. Apparently, Ubernick made a version of Octagon. Yeah. I think he called it Ubergon. There's going to be so many versions of specific maps that mm -hmm. some of them, we're just going to have to wait for the dust to settle to see which ones really kind of get to the top or have the time put in to be well thought out. And it's not just the... Because for some of them, it's like, okay, you obviously used the Forge canvas. You didn't change the lighting at all or mm -hmm. do anything different. It's just you, you went in there, you placed things, and it, it's like, okay. It's a little bit prettier version of Reach's Forge, I guess. <laughs> so I'm once the forgers that really know their stuff get in there and start putting things together and really making things look mm -hmm. unique, that's going to be the point where we really start to see some of that good Forge content out there, I think. You want me to make a potacular version of Octagon here, Kibu? I can. It'll just be Needlers. Now Team if Bubble they Bath, just... Octagon. <laughs> Make it Bubble to where you can now if you could just make it to where if there's a game type it would show you a link to bookmark the game type too. Yeah, it would be nice to link a game type with a with a map. Well, one thing I have noticed is that some of the game types that I've or some of the game types are games I've downloaded, it's built into the map. So only you only have to load the map and it loads the correct settings. Yeah, the way the uh, way things are, are done with the, with the there, script there are other game maps. modes is weird. Yeah. Uh with other other game types or other maps I've found that I have to actually download the game type to go with it. I hope at some point they have a we talked about this a little bit on the Forge Hub podcast. I don't remember if this part specifically made it in. But how in Halo 4, or Halo Reach, there was the insane game mode. Halo 4, there was the the mini game game mode, and I forget what it was in mm -hmm. Halo 5. But basically giving additional options within the game mode settings. Yeah. To, and it'd be nice to have that in as like a separate game mode so you can maybe like specify some additional things and then pull that data into script brains. Because right now, for some of the things, you have to manually hard code. Like, if you're to do Juggernaut for for some reason, if you want to change the scoring, you either have to base it off of the, the Slayer score in there or some other logic that you hard code into the map. So mm -hmm. if, you need, if you want to change any of those values, like, okay, how many points does a Juggernaut get for a kill? Instead of, like, five, you want it to make three. You have to go in, edit the map, save the map, and then... So it'd be cool to have a mode that you can say be able to tweak the mode. The it'd be able to yeah. tweak the like the settings from the menu and not yeah, have to go like, into forge. Okay, I have three bully, three bullions I can set, five integers I can set, mm -hmm. and just have those be part of the like a, a mini game or community game mode. With those settings that can be pulled in to play doing with your beard. 
<laughs> that can be referenced in script brains. And, that, and then you can really tailor the way that a game mode works without someone having to going in, modifying a map, and then potentially breaking it. Because something that I've seen mm-hmm. Forge Hub stream, they'll go in, make a little change to a script brain, and then other parts of the script brain break. Break. So, although on the other side of that, I like to be able to just pick the map and be not have to go search for the game mode. Yeah, but, but, I, mean, but I mean, we've tweaked settings before, like how many yeah. kills does it take, how long does it take. So, it'd be nice to be able to mm-hmm. tweak some of those settings without having to go in, change the values in the map because the logic is stored yeah. in the map instead of in the game mode. Like I said, so there's benefits both ways. Forge Lord, if you're listening, I think that would be really handy to have. Please. Please. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for the podcast tonight, folks. Thanks for listening. Uh, Fragon Friday's tomorrow. We will try to, I guess, are you planning on doing customs? Seeing if we'll do customs? Yeah. Okay. So, if you want to come play some Halo Infinite customs, come on over and join us at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I don't think there's a point in pulling the poll out, since we'll be playing infinite so probably playing just, infinite yeah we're not going to do a poll this week just come on over play some halo infinite customs with gt and the gang i will not be here i will be heading out of town for a wedding yeah I, um we'll probably start out with a little you know the beginning of the night with a little multiplayer and then once we get a few people in the lobby we'll jump into some customs and see if we can break halo try some covert one flag with bobby or keys or no, I actually want to enjoy the game night. Well, they, they've it's there's CSR now, which isn't based on MMR, so you might actually have a good time in matchmaking. Yeah, now. right. Give sure. it a try. Give it a try. See what happens. All right, folks. Thanks for listening on Twitch. Thanks for downloading us in the podcast. Catch you all later. Bye. Thank you for listening to Pod Tackler, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. You can find our podcast on your favorite podcasting service and listen to us live every Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. Check out our website, podtackler.com, and join the community on Discord at podtackler.com slash Discord. If you want to play Halo with us, come join us for Fragon Fridays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Become a supporter of the show by sharing the show with your friends and family. Or help keep the lights on by subscribing to us on Twitch, donating via PayPal, or becoming a patron alongside Confal, Pins Halo, and Prestige Ace. Until next time, keep on fragging trucks.